Hey, 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 super excited to record this video for you today, showing you three ways, three things that you can do when your spiritual awakening gets intense. You know what I'm talking about. It is when you start to feel irritable. You start to feel like things are falling apart, not aligning. You start to get impatient because you see this vision, feel this vision, but you don't feel like you are fully there yet or your reality hasn't quite, isn't quite matching this feeling that you have inside. You are feeling all these old energies coming up and coming out. You're getting triggered as fuck. You're getting triggered as fuck because those things that trigger us are there to wake us up where we are still sleeping. Stay with it, light worker. This spiritual awakening for you will be your transcendence from that old consciousness to the new consciousness where you are fully stepping into everything that you desire, living big, living out your soul goal, living aligned, doing the things that you love and getting paid for them. So when those energies get intense, you are going to do the following three things. First of all, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm going to help you to understand how crazy these intense energies can get when you're going through that spiritual awakening. Back in February 2022, I posted a video here on YouTube. I had to pull the car over to the side of the road. I was so frustrated. I had just come out of a three-day challenge that I have been doing for free for a couple of years called Unleash Your Legacy. And I was still working in the area of helping change makers like me to leverage their personal story and get more traction online, connecting with their clients, making more income and impact. The thing I hadn't realized at this point was that I was vibrating outside the level of this offer. I had been through such a spiritual awakening myself. I didn't realize that I was no longer vibrating at this offer. I was meant for more and I was still clinging on to the past. I was stuck in this revolving story of feeling this emergence from inside, this connection to new things, new ways and still going back to old habits and old patterns and really getting stuck behind that I don't know how to go forward phrase. And so I just kept doing the same. And this challenge, while yes, it had amazing people, yes, people had breakthroughs, I had the worst conversion I have ever had out of this challenge. I literally signed two people up who then backtracked and decided they weren't going to do the program. And I was sat confronted with what I've been seeing for a long time. And that is that people, when I was talking about social media, when I was talking about visible, get visibility, instead of talking about their soul goals and their desires and the impact that they wanted to create, they were kind of excited about putting on those trousers of taking that big step forward, stepping into alignment, but they weren't willing to wear the trousers full time. And so I reached a point, I pulled the car over to the side of the road and I literally recorded this video. You can watch it on my rants playlist. And I said, that is it. I am done. I am done. I am sick of feeling like this. <laughs> I am sick of banging my head against a wall and trying to drag people to the water that they're not ready to drink. I have to find a way to be in alignment with this new vibration I have found within me and play bigger myself. I, I called my shot. I'm done playing small. And what happened after that, that point has been incredible. I am going to reveal this whole story very, very soon. It's going to blow your mind what happened when I set that intention, made that commitment to following my feeling, following my heart instead of listening to my goddamn head. I am a recovered survivor. I have invested the last seven years of my life letting go of my identity from the past, letting go of my stories, learning how to hack my limiting emotions, hack my physical body utilize all of my brain, step into my creative power, awaken my creative power and find out who I am, acknowledge who I am and bring my whole life 
into integrity. I realized that I'd kind of taken a few steps backwards and I've explained why it was, I don't know how, fear. And so I decided to take two steps, massive steps forward. And what came up with this was so much fear. Everything I've known in my life is an illusion. It has been the way I have perceived it. Potentially, it is the way I have been shown it, but I was looking at it from a victim consciousness. When you step into your creative power, you realize that you can do anything. You no longer feel powerless. And you realize where you have leaned on things, relied on things outside of yourself, which has led you into this identity that does not feel like it, it is all of you. And for me, it didn't feel like this radical expression of myself that I had started to connect to through my healing journey. And feeling into fully stepping away from everything I knew and fully stepping into this uncertain, unknown place, all of this fear came up and my ego went crazy. I felt the biggest anxiety that I have felt since I suffered chronic anxiety seven years ago when I healed my chronic anxiety seven years ago I felt anxious feelings like I used to feel back then and it was crazy I was asking myself am I going mad what am I doing wrong what I'm here to tell you is this is the spiritual awakening this is the rebirth your ego will scream the loudest when it's on its last legs. It is screaming at you, stop, don't go forward. This is nothing that I know and nothing that I know means it's unsafe. But let's go back to that truth. You are a powerful creator of everything that you have. You can be a recovered survivor of all of those stories, all of your past. But you have to, in the moment when that spiritual awakening gets intense, bring yourself back to a space of peace, a space of calm, and a space of healthy control. So here are the three ways that you can do that. Number one, this one is really important. Probably at this point in your spiritual journey, you have lots of rituals, lots of practices that you do to make you feel that high vibration, that high frequency. But... When your, your spiritual awakening gets intense, it can be easy to fall off those habits because that ego mind is loud, it's noisy. Suddenly you're falling off your morning ritual, not doing that afternoon yoga, not listening to those affirmations and you're starting to listen to this up here. So it's really important as number one, the first step to have something simple you can always go back to. It's almost like your basic foundation of spiritual practice, what I call the um, activation of your mir miracle frequency, so that when you're trying to fall back on the wagon, it's not hard. I have a 22-minute breath work that I can go back to. It is my most, most basic gratitude practice. It is a 22-minute beautiful journey. And that is where I go back to each time. If I fall off my rituals, I fall back on that wagon the simple way with a practice that I love, a practice that doesn't take too much time, and a practice that makes me feel amazing. You can get access to this 22-minute breath work down in the description underneath this video. And I encourage you to sign up to the challenge to do this 22-minute breath work for the 22 days. That way, you're going to build this habit of breathing every single day with all of its benefits. And you can deepen your practice like I did into the more advanced journeys, into those altered states of consciousness. There is so much we can do with breath work. But in those times when your spiritual awakening gets intense, you'll always have this simple practice to go back to because once you start breathing again every day for 22 minutes a day, it is really easy to build other practices back on. Number two, when that spiritual awakening is getting intense, carve 40 minutes, 45 minutes to do a really relaxing, healing breath work. The breath rhythm we use to heal and to activate the parasympathetic nervous system is the four by eight breath. Just feel it right now. Sit straight, lay your hands on your knees and breathe in right the way from your root, filling your belly first, coming up through your diaphragm into your chest and then breathe out for a count of eight after me.
I will even hold for eight if I'm doing it without music. And then breathe back in for four. And what happens when we're extending that, that exhale is we're switching that parasympathetic nervous system on. We're slowing our brave wa brain waves down, telling the brain stem everything's okay. And when the brain stem believes that everything is okay, we can actually imprint positive things into our mind and body, take different action, take new, do new habits, new things that create new feelings. So emotions are the end products of our experiences, right? So you want to be able to put yourself into these experiences at the drop of a hat when you feel unsteady, ungrounded, and from there you can create different emotions that are going to lead to different actions, create different results. So I encourage you to drop down into the description underneath this video and just try out my healing breath work. It is a beautiful four by eight healing breath work. I believe it's about 40, 45 minutes long and bookmark it, save it, create a playlist so that when those spiritual awakening energies get intense, you can just commit to yourself, nourish yourself, give back to yourself, find that time, do that full journey. And I promise you, you'll feel amazing effects. Now, before I drop into tip number three, I would love to invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm here regularly posting new content to help you fully step into your soul goal, into that life of your dreams and make attracting everything to you easy. I believe you can have it all and it can be easy. You can become a recovered survivor of your past experiences. You can shift identity into the person who is creating the world, the income, the impact that you want. So just go below the video right now, click subscribe. Even you can hit the little bell to get notifications when I put videos up like this. This week, I will be, po be posting a video like this every single day to help you on your journey to your soul aligned freedom lifestyle where you are living the income and the impact that you want. I also encourage you to share this video with any of your friends who you feel will benefit from this information. Maybe they've snapped at you. Maybe you can see them on that, uh, that shaky ground. Um, obviously, we have a new moon every month and that can get crazy with our energy. So feel free to share this, share this with friends um, so that you can help them as well. And comment comment below and let me know what has been helpful so far. Which out of these three things are you going to try? And once you've tried them, come back around and tell me the difference in how it made you feel. Going into number three, the bliss breath. This is a soma breath technique. I am a trained transformational coach, part of the soma breath community. Soma breath changed my life. And I'm going to drop a link down in the comment, down in the description again, so that you can check out this amazing soma breath work modality so that you can not only learn from me, but from all, from all of the amazing instructors in the community and Maybe you want to bring that breathwork modality in to your toolbox as well. So the bliss breath is this beautiful breath where similarly to that four by eight, we actually visualize this beautiful golden healing light. And this is where instead of having to carve out 40, 45 minutes for a journey, you can very quickly um, activate your parasympathetic nervous system, calm down and create this beautiful um, place of safety. Because that is what the brain is fearing. It is fearing unsafety. When I fully stepped across that line and I declared, I'm a light worker. I am here to create whatever I want and I can. And I don't need any of these systems and, and structures that I've had in the past. They have all been an illusion of safety. They have all been outside of my own free will. And I am ready to take my free will, use my free will and create the world I want to live in. 
And so when I felt that fear, that was my brain just just not knowing this, this new place, this new state. And so in those moments of fear, I was able to really sit still and focus on my breath and breathe this beautiful golden light in for four. And what you do is you bring it up the back of your spine. So you imagine it sucking it in from your root and it's coming in, we're pulling in that universal energy, that coherence around us, breathing it up the back of your spine, and this time just bringing it all the way to the top of your head, holding it for a moment at your crown, and then letting it flow down the front of your spine. Beautiful, golden light. Make that exhale longer, and again, sit with that pause at the bottom. Now, this beautiful bliss breath, Not only is it activating your parasympathetic nervous system, not only is it pulling in that coherent universal energy, it is making your energy coherent as well. And if you're looking for more manifestation, if you are looking for more things to come more easily into your life, you have to find this place of coherence in your energy which is why I am launching my very own app, a resource that you can have in your pocket to activate your miracle frequency at any time you want using my seven by seven miracle frequency method. These are simple, short, seven minute rituals that you can do anytime, no equipment necessary. And they will change your frequency really, really fast. And if you build them into every single day, just taking seven minutes, seven times a day to create this coherence in your energy, to start to manifest everything that you want. I'm going to pop down into the description one final link, and that is the link to activate your miracle frequency, to be one of the very first that accesses this amazing app. So recapping those three things, number one, make sure you have a basic ritual to come back to, something really simple that if you fall off your rituals when your spiritual awakening gets intense, you have somewhere really simple to start again. I recommend my 22-minute breath work that you can actually do as a 22-day challenge to bring this in as a solid habit and and start to create different, better results in your life and business. Number two, carve out 40 to 45 minutes when those energies get intense. Maybe it's before bed, maybe it's when you get up in the morning, maybe it's middle of the day, but carve it out have the resource to go to my 40 to 45 minute healing breath work that I have linked down in the description of this post and do this so that you activate that calm in your body. You activate your parasympathetic nervous system. You heal those dark energies that are just being lifted up to come out when that spiritual awakening is getting intense because you're so close to the light. And number three, use the bliss breath in any moment that those energies get intense, in any moment that you want to switch back to a state of coherence. And that is just where we're breathing with a four by eight and bringing that golden light into that circle. And even within just a few breaths, you will feel this beautiful, magical calm. And if you want more coherence in your life, if you want that miracle frequency to start attracting abundant wealth, happiness, success, drop down into the description and be one of the very first to access my app so that you can have me in your pocket with my magical 7x7 miracle frequency method that I promise you is going to change your life.